Now, just this word strikes fear in a lot of people. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Watch how simple I made this. Simple DNA. Deoxy, I mean, some is oxygenated, so... There's two strands in what they call a double helix. Okay, one is going up. The other is going down. There is a handedness to this. So what we're going to take is just one of these chains for now to show you how this works. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, it's a nuclear membrane that holds all the nucleic acids in there. There are bases, there are purines, pyrimidines. There's all these names for it. Okay, but what we're sticking with now, the ribose is a sugar. Each of these is a carbon. Okay. Sugar that we think of usually is sucrose, but there's other types of sugars, okay? Carbon hydrogens are sugars with an oxygen. Now, ribose is home plate. See, there's one, two, three, four, and the oxygen forms a ring because these can form straight molecules too. So the fifth for ribose is up here, okay? Five sugars, five carbons, in a ribose, okay? Now, there's only three parts to a DNA molecule. The ribo part, the nucleic acid part, and then what's called a phosphate backbone, all right? So phase one of this, I'm looking one day, and you know I did Mickey Mole and the Neutron Bunny and other such things. So I go, well, you know, nobody knows DNA. Nobody understands the ribo part. Nobody can draw it. You know, they have trouble enough drawing the double helix structure here, knowing that one is going up and one's going down. So I looked at the ribose and I said, hey, let's put a little smiley face in there. And now what we have is Ricky ribose. Okay, this is true to form to a chemist. Now, it's this carbon here. Usually, riboses have oxygens coming off, okay? Some will go down, some can go up, etc., you know? Well, this, to be a real true ribose, would have an oxygen on it. RNA does. RNA DNA, sounds familiar? Ribonucleic acid is simply a ribose that has that oxygen on there. Maybe it just gives it a different confirmation. But for DNA, that is deoxy. So no oxygen on that corner there. So we've got the ribose. Now the phosphate backbone. Phosphorus, we'll give it a green color here, okay? And we'll give the oxygen screen. There's going to be a phosphate here. It's going to have a double bond to an oxygen, single bond to an oxygen, single bond, and then it's going to go up and bond another one. Down here, O, P, O, O, O. Down again. Underneath up here is going to be another ribose. Is it going to show here? Do I get enough room? So where this elbow is binds that phosphate. Well, the next ribose up here, that elbow, comes in. So these phosphates will form chains. I'll show a better drawing now, but I'm, I'm focusing on three parts. The ribose, 
phosphate. And then over here with his arm is where he can hold the nucleic acid. There's guanine and thionine and T and A, C and G. We won't get into all that. But in order to draw a DNA molecule, the three parts, phosphate backbone, ribose sugar, nucleic acid. So, now that we see that, on a condensed form, to get the double helix here, what I came up with was, okay, you've got ribose, 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 home base kind of thing, elbows, that's a carbon in there. That's a fifth carbon up there on the elbow, okay? The phospho, I say Ricky, Ruby, Ronnie. You can have all these riboses, right? Well, they're either picking or kicking the phospho flowers, I call them. So maybe I'll change my color scheme here. I'm going to make the phosphorus blue now. So where the elbow comes down, there's a phosphorus. And the phosphorus has oxygens around it to form what they call the phosphate. So there's one bonded. And that one should go to that one. This one here, oxygen, 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 oxygen. So technically what these are called are phosphates. So you got a phosphorus. And then what I say is the oxygens I usually just draw like this. So I call this the phosphoflower. Phospho flower. So these guys are either picking with their elbow hand. Make sure you know they're in there, right? And then over here is where they hold that nucleic acid. Now, there's four types of nucleic acids to make this real simple because it is an introduction. The reason T and A and C and G go together and not T and G and C and G's, this has three what are called hydrogen bonds that hold it together. T and A, thymine and adenine only have two. These nucleic acids, call this C and G because it's three bonds in there. Now, the double helix. Remember I said the other one's going the other way. Well, they'll write it like C, G, T, A, you know, and they have all these fancy drawings like, you know, C, G, okay, T, A. Well, this is wrong, because if we're teaching you how to do it, it would be C, G, T. Well, the A would be upside down. The C would be upside down. The G would be upside down. So when you learn how to draw this this way, now see your little Ricky and Ronnie and Ruby riboses are all smiling at you? Well, over here... They're going to be upside down. See if I can draw these upside down before I do it. One arm holds it, elbow down. See how easy it is? I mean, I'm no, I'm no major Einstein either. Learn to draw this home plate. With an oxygen on top, one arm holds the nucleic acid, the other's got the kink in the elbow. 
Got to draw little smiley faces in, I guess, don't we? And then the phospho flowers around here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this shows that one DNA strand is going that way, one's going this way. I'd love to show you the chemistry of these purines and pyrimidines, as they're called, the nucleic acids. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this introduction, as I say. Phosphates. Ribose sugars. And nucleic acids. There's only three parts to the DNA molecule. RNA. Doesn't have an oxygen on there. Whoop-de-doo. Okay? Double-stranded. One is going in a complementary way and the other. Last, quickly, I'll tell you. Nutrition. How important is that? Magnesium is a cation. It has a 2-plus charge. Magnesium is what gives the rigidity and stability of the DNA strands to hold it together because these oxygens now, all the electrons of oxygens, they have all those lone pairs, they all have negative charges out here, okay? So on the side of a molecule of DNA, a strand of it, all the oxygens have a negative electromagnetic field, okay? Magnesium with the 2 plus as an ion means it lost two of its electrons, so it's got 2 plus overall net charge fits right in there, holds negative of one of the oxygens on that phosphate and the negative of the other one on that. So magnesium stabilizes the DNA molecule. Very important in nutrition. Drink a lot of diet sodas, the phenyl ketones that you see on the side of that. First thing they do is deplete the body of magnesium. Once the magnesium's gone, there's many enzymes, many pathways Without the right concentration of magnesium ion, cations in there, the whole ball of wax starts to melt and fall apart. So these were the three I wanted to introduce you to. You got the Neutron Bunny, Mickey and Mimi Mole, Ricky Ribos, Ruby, Ronnie, Randy, all kinds. DNA for kindergartners. Anybody can do it, I tell you. This is beta C star, that's SI for silicon. This is tryptophan. It's an essential amino acid. We didn't get a chance to get to how proteins are coded through the DNA to the messenger RNA which will then use transfer RNA to make the proteins. And tryptophan is what's called an essential amino acid. Amino acids make up the proteins. They're silicon now.